What's up guys? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. Today's shoe is a shoe from a brand that I haven't tried in over a year. Yeah over a year. It seems like on YouTube that everybody really loved the first version of this shoe, so I was thinking of getting that, but then the second version came out, so I got the second version. And that shoe is the Adidas SL20.2. I decided to give this a shot because Adidas has gotten rid of Boost. Boost is really heavy. And they're using this new midsole material called Light Strike, so I've heard good things, I wanted to give it a shot, so here we are. We're gonna give it a shot. Full disclosure, I already ran 10 miles in this shoe the other day, but I didn't wanna bring the GoPro, so now we're just gonna run like an easy three. So we're gonna lace these up, we're gonna go for another run, and then I'm gonna tell you all about my first run impressions of the Adidas SL20.2. time to talk all about the Adidas SL20.2. I'm not coming at this review having tried the original SL20, so this experience was completely new to me. I had a general idea of what to expect from this shoe, but I didn't know what the first version was like, so I can't really compare the two. But I can give you my thoughts on this puppy right here. My preconceived idea of this shoe was that it's gonna be a lightweight speed day shoe. And I have to be honest, I was skeptical about the light strike midsole. I've never tried that before. And I was kind of skeptical about this shoe in general because I haven't really worn an Adidas shoe that works for me yet. So I was hoping that this would break that curse. I love tempo day shoes, I love lightweight shoes, and that's what I was hoping this would be. So was it? We're gonna find out right now. Before we get started today, I do wanna let you guys know that I paid for the Adidas SL20 with my own money. No one is paying me to make this review. No one's gonna see any of my thoughts before you do. And they're all thoughts that I thought of in my brain that does all the thinking. But without any further ado, let's get on with the specs of the Adidas SL20.2. Oddly enough, I can't find the weight information for a women's size eight, but for my size, this is actually a 10 women's. This came in at 8.4 ounces. So we're in a tempo day shoe sweet spot there, 8.4, that's pretty good. According to Adidas, we have a 9.5 millimeter drop here with 21.5 millimeters of stack in the heel and 12 in the forefoot. And uh, I can't say that this shoe is true to size. Basically to make a long story short, I had watched a couple videos on this shoe before I purchased, I'm not gonna lie. So I had seen that maybe it ran, runs a little bit long and because of that, I ordered a size down, a size 10. So when I first got this shoe, it felt very constricting and maybe like I needed a little bit more room in the toe box. As I started running, it started, it started to loosen up a little bit and the room in the toe box didn't really 
bother me on one foot, but on my left foot, that lack of room in the toe box did start to bother me a little bit. So I don't know if I could have used my regular size or if the 10 is fine. It's kind of a mess sizing wise, I'm not gonna lie. Just something that I definitely wanted to point out. The upper of the Adidas SL 20.2 is an engineered lightweight mesh. It has some overlays or kind of like underlays almost uh, in the forefoot to help with structure. We don't have a ton going on in the midfoot, but if we go to the back of the shoe, the heel counter is pretty sturdy for some support. I'll tell you right off the bat, I don't like this upper. First we have this like plasticky overlay uh, on the mesh, and then under that you have like this softer lightweight mesh, and in there there's like these three underlays in the forefoot, like three lines. One of them is right down the middle, which is giving me like Pegasus Turbo 1. Vibes. I think what was bothering my toe on my left foot was one of these lines here it just didn't agree with me. I was fine on my right foot, but it was just not my favorite. And I think this material combination does make the forefoot a bit stiff and kind of unforgiving, which I didn't really like. It's not a deal breaker. I would just prefer other materials. The laces on this shoe are spaghetti thin, basically. Uh, I was able to get a fairly good lockdown, but again, I think it's just because the upper was so snug for me. And the tongue is also pretty stiff. Uh, it doesn't have much padding. Didn't get in the way of the shoe, but I would prefer something a little bit different. Something I did like, though, about this upper was that the ankle collar is nice and padded. It was pretty comfortable, and I liked that the heel counter is sturdier. Since there isn't a ton going on in the midfoot, I do need a little bit of support, and this heel counter helped me with that. Despite my distaste for the upper, I didn't get any hot spots, blisters, or irritation besides my left big toe rubbing up against one of these lines, and even that wasn't really too terrible. But yeah, I'm really not a fan. Moving on to the midsole of the Adidas SL 20.2. Adidas is using a full slab of Light Strike foam. This is a pretty new foam for Adidas. This is the first time I've ever tried it and my expectations were low, I'm not gonna lie, but it actually pleasantly surprised me. It's no power on PB, but it is good, and I was impressed by it. I did a 10 mile run in this shoe at around a 752 pace overall, and the midsole was very pleasant the entire way. And I especially felt it in that midfoot and forefoot area when I would press down on the foam in my stride. I really did feel a bounce back and it only got better the faster that I went. This shoe really shined at a tempo pace, which is great because that's exactly what it's made for. It made the miles tick away and it was just a great time to run in. I think this shoe will appeal to a lot of people because while you can use it for your tempo days, I believe that it'll probably appeal also to the people who are seeking a lightweight daily trainer that they can use uh, because I feel like this fits that bill. It's fairly low to the ground, but never once on my 10 mile run did I feel like I needed more underfoot. In fact, it actually kind of felt better and better as the miles went on. It's great if you can get over the upper, of course. Moving on to the outsole of the Adidas SL 20.2. Adidas is using continental rubber in the forefoot with some exposed light strike through the midfoot and some more rubber in the heel. I love this outsole. Not only can it grip onto any surface that's thrown at it, but it doesn't get in the way of the ride of this shoe. It has some flex grooves there to help you maintain a relaxed and normal stride. And it only gave me more confidence while I was running. My 10 mile route has a number of surfaces, mostly pavement, but we got some grass, some dirt, some this, some that, and this shoe's outsole handled it like a champ. I think Adidas has the ability to really go overboard with continental rubber and make it thick and stiff, and that could negatively impact the ride of the shoe, but that's not the case at all here, and I really like how they implemented it. The Adidas SL 20.2 is not available 
on runningwarehouse.com just yet, but it is available on Adidas's website for $110, which I think is exactly the price point that this shoe needs to be at. It needs to be able to compete with the Canvaras of the running world. Uh, so yeah, very reasonable price. Despite this not being available on runningwarehouse.com, the original SL20 is available for wildly low discounts. So I will link those down below if you're interested in picking up a pair. Keep in mind that will be an affiliate link with Running Warehouse, but that doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel so I can try all these shoes and hopefully help you make a better choice. Our money is precious and we don't wanna be willy-nilly spending it on shoes that we don't actually like. Despite this shoe's upper and me not really digging it too much, uh, I do really like the midsole and the outsole and therefore will absolutely continue to put miles in this shoe. I'm excited to put it in the rotation and I've kind of wanted to grab it a lot more than I thought that I would. Well guys, that concludes my first run impressions of the Adidas SL20.2. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, hit that notifications bell down below so you can find out every time I upload a new video. Now this is a color I can get down with. I have some more videos for you guys next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like Heller. See you next time. Whew. Ready for a rest day.